Alright guys, I am back with my review of WWE's Monday Night Raw for August 12th, 2013. And the show immediately starts with Daniel Bryan versus Wade Barrett. I thought the match was okay, but I actually think the match they had on SmackDown was better. Um, but Daniel Bryan tries to kick Wade Barrett's fucking head off. Um, Wade Barrett ducks and rolls up Daniel Bryan. And Brad Maddox, who's the special referee, does a fast count. So he screws Daniel Bryan over here. Daniel Bryan gets pissed off. He acts like he's going to attack Maddox, but Maddox escapes. Then we get Randy Orton versus Damian Sandow. Sandow handcuffs his brand new case to the ring post since Cody Rhodes is on commentary, so he can't steal the briefcase. Um, I don't know where he keeps the keys to the handcuffs, but this match I didn't really care much for. I didn't think it was that great at all. And eventually, Cody Rhodes starts to mess with the briefcase. This distracts Damian Sandow, allowing Randy Orton to hit the RKO for the win. So, as far as I know, Randy Orton doesn't even have a match at SummerSlam, so why did he need to go over here? Um, there was some distraction, but still. So now I'm pretty sure that Damian Sandow is probably going to win at SummerSlam. Um, especially since he looked weak here, and I guess they just wanted to kind of throw Orton a bone since he might cash in. I really don't think he's going to. I'm hoping he doesn't, um, but I guess we have to wait and see. And then RVD is backstage doing the splits. <laughs> oh, this is crazy. It reminds me of that John claude Van Damme video that's on YouTube. Um, it's a montage of his greatest splits ever, and he says, because of my big legs and karate, I can do the splits, no problem. And that's the first thing that popped in my head when I saw RVD doing these splits. I also wanted to mention that it does look like Wade Barrett's growing the beard back. And I'm happy about that because I said in my SmackDown review, Wade Barrett was running around saying, look what you did to me because he's all clean shaven now. Well, just grow the beard back, man. It takes like a fucking week. Um, so I'm glad they had him grow the beard back. Then we get a great promo by The Shield. Dean Ambrose says there's a battle royal tonight to determine who faces him at SummerSlam for the U.S. title, so that should be interesting. They show the Brock Lesnar promo from SmackDown, and Matthews is backstage with CM Punk, and he actually asks him, why take a match this close to SummerSlam? It's against Paul Heyman. Are you serious? Punk's been running around for three weeks, four weeks, saying how much he wants to get his hands on Heyman. Why wouldn't he take this match? And now it's going to be the Great Kali and Natalya versus Big E and AJ. This is not going to be pretty. What the hell did I just watch? So they had the girls do most of the work in this, actually all of the work in this match. So it wasn't that bad. But the finish, <laughs> Natalya gets AJ in the sharpshooter, and then she lets her go as AJ's tapping out. And Natalya's just walking around like she doesn't know what to do. She actually holds the referee's hand at one point, which was really awkward. And then she just puts AJ in the sharpshooter again, and then AJ taps out again. So that's that. And then Biggie attacks Hornswoggle and gets karate chopped by the Great Kali. So <laughs> um, now I'm thinking Biggie is going to go over Dolph this Sunday. They announced the U.S. title match with Dean Ambrose and whoever wins the Battle Royal tonight is going to be the pre-show match. I actually thought they were going to do Mark Henry and the Usos versus The Shield, but I guess they're not going in that direction. Uh, so Vince McMahon comes out. He asks Maddox to come down to the ring, and he says, hey, that count was a little fast. Maddox says he did his best, and he wants another chance. He wants to be the referee at SummerSlam with the John Cena versus Daniel Bryan match. And Vince says, well, you promised to call right down the middle. You promised to quit calling Daniel Bryan a troll and a dwarf and uh, saying he's a toothpick. And Maddox says yes to all of this stuff. So Vince is about to make him the special referee and Triple H comes out. Vince actually says he hasn't been the same since he cut his hair during his entrance, which was funny. And Triple H says he should be the referee. He hits the pedigree on Maddox and Vince storms off. So we get Kane versus Titus O'Neil, and before the match starts, they show a little video package of the Kane versus Bray Wyatt feud. And the funny thing about this video is the end shows Kane laughing, 
and then Bray Wyatt laughing, and they just go back and forth. It was kind of goofy. Um, but Kane beats Titus O'Neil with a choke slam. The Bray Wyatt family comes out, and when the lights come back on, Kane is up the ramp. He sets his pyro off, and Bray Wyatt just cackles at him. So I thought this was pretty good stuff. Actually, I have to say, overall, it's not been a bad show. I like the Vince McMahon segment. I like the Brad Maddox stuff. Um, nothing really too great match-wise so far, but um, yeah, it's been a decent show. So the Bellas are backstage, and Natalia comes up. And they get into an argument, and then Eva Marie comes up, and then the Funkadactyls. So they make another match for SummerSlam, Natalia and the Funkadactyls versus the Bellas, and Eva Marie... I'm sure she's not going to work a lot in that match. And then Brie Bella slaps Natalya in the face. Um, then we get Kofi versus Del Rio. I actually like the match. Kofi seemed a little discombobulated at times, though. Um, but it was a decent match here. Del Rio wins with the arm breaker. So Kofi came back last week on Raw and won a match. Then he lost on SmackDown. And then he lost tonight. So, after all this time away, he comes back and he's right where they left him. Which actually is fine by me because I'm not the biggest Kofi fan. And at this point, I just don't see WWE ever using him past where he's at now. So, um, I've, I guess I've just gotten used to that idea. They played a cool video for Christian hyping up his match against Del Rio this Sunday. Um, I thought it was really good. I'm wondering if they might actually put the belt on Christian again, which would be awesome. Um, then we see Del Rio come up backstage to Christian. He says some stuff in Spanish I couldn't understand. And then we get the Real Americans versus the Usos. you got to give some credit to Cesaro. He seems like he's really enjoying this gimmick. Uh, maybe he's just happy they're finally doing something with him. And, I mean, it's better than that yodeling bullshit they had him out there doing. So um, it just seems like he's really enthusiastic about this. But the match was okay, nothing too great here. The Usos actually win with a roll-up on Jack Swagger, so there wasn't a lot to say about this one, but I am glad they're pushing the Usos. I know a lot of people don't really care for them, but I like the fact that they're a real tag team, and that's what WWE needs in the tag team division, is some more tag teams and not just a bunch of dudes put together. Before I forget, I wanted to mention Zeb Coulter's awesome promo he cut where he said he hopes the earthquake causes California to break apart from the rest of the country and float out into the ocean. Um, but damn, this segment right here, it's Miz TV with Daniel Bryan and John Cena. And this shit was amazing. This was one of the best things they've done in a long time right here. These guys killed this shit. Um, Daniel Bryan says that Cena doesn't respect him but, and I'm going to hit just the cliff notes here. This went on for a very long time. But he says, Cena doesn't respect him, but Cena's not a wrestler. And he says that he made this t-shirt, the, the Beard is Here shirt, because it's a parody of John Cena's shirt. And he did that because John Cena is a parody of wrestling. And I was like, damn, Brian just killed this. And then Cena comes back, and he's actually pretty good too. He says that he's proud of who he is. And he's beat all these names, and Daniel Bryan has a lot to live up to. And they go back and forth, and Daniel Bryan says that in Japan, they do this thing before a match to get both guys fired up, where they just slap each other in the face as hard as they can. And he wishes he could do that to Cena, but he can't, because Cena's not a wrestler, and he doesn't deserve it. And then Triple H comes out, who I guess is the special referee for the match Sunday. Um, they went ahead and made that official. I, did, I thought he was just trying to get under Vince's skin early on, but um, he is the special ref. And Triple H comes out and tries to keep everything calm. Cena actually did slap Daniel Bryan, um, but Bryan refused to slap him because, like he said, he didn't deserve it. So Triple H is trying to keep some order, and then Randy Orton just comes out and holds up the briefcase. But yeah, this segment, this, this Raw was okay so far. Um, nothing too great. The build hasn't been the best. I don't even think Dolph Ziggler is going to be on this show. They, they're probably going to do the Dolph Ziggler, Caitlyn, Biggie, AJ stuff on SmackDown. Um, but there wasn't a whole lot going on, and the matches haven't been that great. But this segment right here um, definitely really helped this Raw out. 
All right, so it's Fandango versus R Truth. Um, they don't have a match at all. They have kind of a dance off. It was pure comedy here. Um, I actually thought it was pretty funny. R Truth's dancing was funny, and then they start fighting, and he knocks Fandango out of the ring, and Fandango just says his name again. It's Fandango. Um, so it was funny, and this is the best Fandango outfit yet. This one was awesome. But that was pretty much the entire match segment. Um, but I wanted to mention something else about the awesome Cena Daniel Bryan segment they just did. Um, when Cena cut his promo, it was very good. And at first I was thinking, man, he's making Daniel Bryan look like shit. Because Daniel Bryan started off hot with the Cena's a parody line. And then Cena came back and, I mean, he nailed his promo. And he really made... I mean, I was hyped for the match right then and there. But he made Daniel Bryan kind of look weaker. But when Daniel Bryan came back, and this just showed how great Daniel Bryan is. He came back, he held his own, and when he hit him with that... I can't even slap you because you're not a real wrestler line. It just was phenomenal stuff here. So I can't give these guys enough credit for that. But yeah, the Fandango R-True stuff was just pure comedy. They just started the 20-man battle royal to determine who faces Dean Ambrose. And you got the usual suspects in here. You got Kali, the Usos, um, 3MB, Tons of Funk, Barrett, Fandango. But the only guys who have a chance of winning this thing are Ryback, Mark Henry, and RVD. Not the best battle royal ever because it was so predictable. It did come down to those three guys. Um, but they did do some cool stuff. I like the spot with Kofi Kingston where he's thrown to the outside, but he holds on to Cesaro's body like he's going for a sunset flip. I thought that was cool. But RVD and Henry eliminate Ryback. Henry charges RVD, he pulls the rope down, Henry goes over, RVD wins the match. So RVD was brought in with all this hype, and now he's on the freaking pre-show of SummerSlam. But the shield comes out, and they surround the ring, Henry's in there with RVD, and Big Show returns. He was just wearing street clothes, but he did return, the shield retreats, and it's funny because I was actually wondering when Big Show would return while watching the Battle Royal because I think it was the last Battle Royal Big Show was in is the one where he threw Wade Barrett to the outside and Barrett got injured. Um, so I was actually thinking about him early on in this match. But Big Show did return here. So I don't know if they're going to do anything with Mark Henry and Big Show versus The Shield. Um, it does feel like The Shield's kind of just there at the moment. They're not really doing anything with these guys, which sucks. Um... But yeah, hopefully the Shield, I'm sure they're going to come back once they have a plan for him. But um, yeah, Big Show finally returned here, and RVD will face Dean Ambrose at SummerSlam. Heyman comes down to the ring, and he starts talking about CM Punk, and he brings Brock Lesnar out, and he says, It is a trap. Big surprise. And then he plays a video for Brock of Brock destroying CM Punk and they were running really short on time so I thought okay maybe they're improvising and they won't be able to do what they actually had planned uh, but then they say that CM Punk can be a coward and stay in the back or he can come out here and play the hero and take on both of them so Punk attacks from behind he grabs a camera from the cameraman hits Brock with it beats him down grabs a chair beats Brock with a chair he goes after Heyman they run up the ramp, Curtis Axel comes out, Punk hits him with the GTS, and that was pretty much it. Um, I didn't think this was all that great, and at first it was really just kind of awkward, and that's what made me think, hey, they don't have enough time to do what they really wanted to do. But Punk beating down Brock, I thought they did a good job with that, and then Curtis Axel hit the GTS. So at this point, I think Brock Lesnar is going to kill CM Punk at SummerSlam. But overall... Um, this was a good Raw. You had a lot of build for the storylines going into SummerSlam, so I guess it accomplished its mission. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of stuff that could have been better. They were running very close to running out of time at the end of the show, and they could have cut out some of the earlier crap that we didn't really need to see. But besides that, I have to say it was a good show this week, and most of that is because of the awesome Daniel Bryan Cena segment. 
So anyways, that's my review of this week's WWE Raw. I'll be back with my predictions a little bit later on for SummerSlam. So hope you guys liked the video. Leave your thoughts on this week's show in the comments, and thanks for watching. Bye.